Hey, good morning. This is Jerry here over at Wealth Dynamics. Hope you're having a terrific day today. Wanted to give you a quick video. I'm on my way to the Wealth Dynamics headquarters this morning, and I wanted to talk to you about where the wealthy actually put their money at right now. And if you look at it statistically, we can give you an answer. Now, a lot of my following, we're, we're uh, real estate investors, fans of real estate, uh, and I wanted to cover that with you real quick first. So the, the attitude is that real estate, you know, is where the wealthy put all of their money. That you just get money, put it in real estate and earn cash flow. Now, I love real estate. Real estate is one of my favorite investments. I do private lending deals on real estate. I help my clients invest in real estate. But I do it a little bit differently than most people. And I want to share with you how I do it, why I do it that way, and what the wealthy have done. So if we check this out, statistically, where do the wealthy hold their assets? 65% of it is actually small business equity, not real estate. Okay, real estate only represents about 35% of the portfolio for the average person in the top 1%. So if you think about that, there's almost twice as much small business equity as there is real estate. Okay, 35% uh, of them also said that, that uh, the majority of their net worth is in private placements. Okay, private placements being real estate, but it's not necessarily just real estate that uh, you know you own and you're managing yourself and you're running the property and, and, and it's kind of a traditional setting. It's investing in a fund that buys real estate. Now, that's actually what I do personally and that's what I help my clients do as well. And I wanna talk to you about why. So first, we've gotta realize real estate and investing is actually secondary to small business. That's the first thing we've gotta realize. Even those that you're emulating right now, the Grant Cardones of the world, the Brad Sumrocks of the world, they're buying real estate with the profits from their business. So they didn't just, as a consumer, start buying real estate. They first had a business. They made lots of money. They kept as much of it as they possibly could. And then they took that money and invested it in real estate. So if you emulate them, you should be doing the same thing. You should be putting your money in small business increasing sales, keeping large margins of that money, and then taking the proceeds and investing that in real estate. And once you've got the real estate, you're really just earning small monthly drips. Okay, you're not getting rich off of one property. I tell people this all the time. If you've got a hundred grand and you put it in a good real estate deal, you might make a thousand dollars a month. Okay, you're not rich on a thousand dollars a month. It's gonna take you a hundred months to recuperate the principal that you put into the deal. So that's a very slow drip. And the game is you've got to do that and then go back to the first square of earning money through the small business so that you can accelerate the next investment in addition to your cash flow and then do it again and now you've got two grand a month coming in. And then you go back to square one and you increase the revenue from the small business once again, invest another hundred grand and now you've got $3,000 a month coming in and you continue to grow that and stack that until you've got a substantial amount of passive income arriving in your mailbox or in your bank account every single month and you're able to snowball that into more investments even faster. That's the game. So when you look at where the wealthy invest, like I said, 65% of their, their uh, assets are in small business equity. Uh, actually, the next biggest holding for them is private placement securities, private placement investments which is me getting into a fund that buys real estate. And I wanna hit this really quick before I wrap up today. If you're an investor and the thing that you do full-time to produce income is profitable and it's more profitable than the $1,000 a month or the $500 a month you might get if you invest in real estate, I don't think you should buy the real estate yourself. I think you should invest in funds that give you either a debt secured position on the real estate or an equity ownership position on the real estate where you're not responsible to manage any of the property you're not responsible for any of the the bookkeeping the customer service any of that stuff the reason why is i know too many investors that get involved in real estate at a small to mid-tier level and it takes up all of their time okay all of their free time goes to tenant management projects remodels fixes and it's human nature to try and avoid expenses. So what happens is you get in and you might cash flow on your real estate deal until something breaks. And then you look at the repair bill and you look at how much it's gonna to cost to repair. And then you look at the markups from the contractor that you're getting the quote from and you decide that it's not that good of a deal and that you could do that work easily for less money and it's gonna save you your cash flow. 
okay, now you're replacing a water heater. That's how business owners operate naturally. Now, that's not how a, a successful business operates because a successful business can increase sales, but a real estate deal can't. You can't just go in there and raise rent all of a sudden or, or whip another unit out of thin air to rent out. Like You've got the capacity maxed out. That's all the revenue you're gonna get and the cash flow comes from margin. So most owners will willingly trade their time for that margin. And now you're no longer in, an investor, you have a job. So if you invest in a fund, let's say you do one of my deals. Okay, we do debt. So we, we lend on deals and we secure that loan with collateral. So that means one of two things. Number one, we're gonna get paid what we're gonna get paid no matter what. It's a debt note, it's like a mortgage. If you if you do a mortgage with the bank, there's no wiggle room for you to change your monthly payment. You have to pay it. And just like a mortgage with the bank, what happens if you don't pay? They foreclose on your house. So you lose the asset that you're getting the financing for. So that's how we do most of our deals is we send out debt positions secured by the collateral so that if the owner that's loaning them or borrowing that money from us, misses the payment, we foreclose on the asset, we take it away. Now we own the asset, which is better than an equity position of, you know, I might make potentially, you know, more money, but also I could lose money. And if that loss happens and it goes down below what I was expecting, there's no recourse for me. Yeah, I can't take the asset. If I lose the money, I just lose the money and that's it. End of the day, end of the day, that's all I'm gonna see there. So if you're an investor and you're thinking, man, I'm trying to go faster, I'm trying to speed this thing up, number one is invest in small business. Whether that is your own or whether that is another small business that you wanna buy shares of or become a, a, a stakeholder in, that's gonna give you an accelerator on your wealth. So investing in small businesses. Number two is this. Number two is this. If you have an investment in real estate, make sure that that investment in real estate cannot go down in value that your payments cannot fluctuate up and down, and that if they don't pay you, you get something from it. Guys, Warren Buffett's number one rule for investing is don't lose money, and that's exactly what we're doing here. So what I wanna do really quick is if you're watching this, before I sign out, I'm about to drop a link in the comments. I built a site for you that you can log into today, and you can check out, it's called Speed of Wealth, and I did an entire course on this exact thing, what separates those that have wealth from those who, who do not. And it's not luck and it's not opportunity. It's things like I talked about today. Okay, it's things like, all right, how how do I invest to where I don't lose money? Or, or how do I invest in a fund that doesn't consume any of my time but gives me guaranteed cash flow every month that I know that, you know, if that cash flow doesn't come in, I can at least foreclose and get something out of it. How do I do that? And if you have those slight little edges, those compound and build up over time and ultimately it makes you wealthy faster. So guys, that's what I have for you today. Make sure that you do like, share and subscribe if this video helped you today. I wanna thank you for watching and I will talk to you soon.